and welcome. Today I'm joined by uh, Cellnex Chairman Franco Benave and by uh, Chief Executive uh, Tobias Martinez. A uh, welcome, gentlemen. Now we're going to talk about 2019 for Cellnex, and it was a pretty busy year. Uh, you managed to grow the business in some of the company's key markets, Italy, France, uh, Switzerland, the UK, your home country, Spain. And you also uh, pushed into two new countries, Ireland and Portugal. And to fund some of that, uh, you carried out two major uh, capital increases for 3.7 billion euros. Uh, Mr. Martinez, what stands out for you in that <laughs> hectic year? So it has been really an outstanding year, 2019. Uh, as you said before, two successful capital increase with a lot of appetite from, from the investors. So it means that we are having the support of our investors base. This is very important for a growth project like uh, Celnex. Second important thing is we are expanding our geographical footprint beyond of our six countries. So we are improving our footprint in UK, but we are adding two new countries, Ireland and Portugal. Two important parts in order to build really a European platform. And therefore we are seeing 2020 with a lot of optimism because we are achieving all of the goals that we set when we IPO the company in 2015. And the market has certainly received that news uh, pretty well. The, the share price has doubled uh, over the last year. Um, Mr. Mr. Benabel, um, you joined the company back in July. So you've, you've observed the company with a bit of perspective in the first half of the year. Uh, what for you is, is the big highlight of 2019? Well, I was very lucky to be elected chairman of the company in the middle of one of the most dynamic years for the company. But I must say also for the uh, for any company where I've worked over the last uh, several decades. It's really been a transformational year for the company and uh, it has been very successfully received by the markets. Uh, the market appreciated the dynamism of the company, uh, the expansion, the growth, the dynamic growth that the company has been able to achieve uh, in the year thanks also to the effort that, uh, of preparation that has been going on, I think, for several years. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, uh, at the end of the year, the company is really one of the most successful companies in the entire telecommunications industry. Uh, not only has the company expanded inorganically, but in the meantime, it has also consolidated organically its business. Now let's talk about the company's M&A because uh, since 2015 uh, Cellnex has carried out about 25 acquisitions uh, but 2019 uh, was spectacular in terms of, of uh, M&A even by Cellnex's standards. Uh, Mr Martinez, uh, what for you were the factors driving that particularly intense year? For us it's very important to set a European platform and our main objective, our main priority today is to consolidate our existing footprint in the six countries where we were at the very beginning in 2019. Now, currently, we are delivering in eight countries, but our first priority is always to consolidate every market, every country, to reach a certain level of size of the company, because infrastructure size matters in terms of synergies, in terms of uh, operational excellence. Even though beyond of these six countries where we were at the beginning of 2019, obviously we are always looking for the opportunities to expand our footprint in the western of Europe. And do you think more and more European operators are looking to divide uh, their infrastructure into separate units, separate businesses? and that provides opportunities for Cellnex? Yeah, this is about uh, the transformational uh, period that we are living in, in our industry. For the telecom operators, make a lot of sense to outsource the passive infrastructure. Why? Because coverage in Europe is not a competitive advantage anymore. And then, this is the reason why, make a lot of sense 
to monetize the passive infrastructure, to reinvest in the acceleration of the rollout of the optical fiber, how to develop 5G new services. And this is when uh, Celnex is the trustable partner for the future. This is the reason why we are investing on behalf and aligning with the strategy of our customers. And this is the reason why we are signing 20 or 30 years length of contracts because our customers are seeing Celnex as a long-term trustable partner. 80% of the large European operators, perhaps the previous uh, state monopolies, uh, still own their towers, still own their, uh, their sites. Uh, do you think that that is going to change uh, looking ahead? Do you think uh, there's a trend uh, for them to try to, to turn to uh, companies like Cellnex more in the future uh, because of the difficulty of, of making that profitable? Especially the mobile network operators uh, and in general the telecom operators uh, are facing uh, an increasing competition which makes uh, a margin thinner. Uh, they need to rationalise cost. They need to rebalance uh, their financial structure and therefore they need uh, to uh, make a very clear cut uh, between what is really strategic and what can be shared. And I think that uh, the passive infrastructure in the mobile, but in the future I think also in the fixed uh, telephony, will be shared uh, to a large extent. Mm -hmm. Mr Martinez, do you feel there'll come a point when uh, there will be a limit to how much uh, uh, the market is, is willing to finance future growth and you'll have to uh, hold back. Do you, uh, do you see uh, the limit uh, in the near future? How, how do you uh, assess that? Well, we are not seeing limits. Meanwhile, we uh, keep uh, coherent with our strategy, with our credit rating. So this is the reason why we are uh, using all of the financial instruments, not just equity. We are uh, issuing bonds, we, are, uh, we have uh, bank loans. So we are using all of the financial instruments in order to finance the growth. But you are right, at a certain point of time we have to ask for new equity, for fresh equity, in order to maintain uh, let me say, a coherent uh, capital structure. I have to say thank you very much to all of our shareholders, to all of our investors. Why? Because they have been very, very supportive. <clears throat> Two capital increases, up to 3.7 billion euros in one year. It's a really, really an outstanding outcome. So this is a fact, but we have to keep delivering every year, every quarter, and this is our commitment. When you look at the IBEX 35, Spain's blue chip index, you must both be pretty happy. Uh, it, it, Cellnex shares have been the best performers over the past uh, 12 months. Uh, do you ever worry what goes up must come down or you, are you simply just both enjoying it? The performance of the company is not uh, something that comes out of the blue. The performance of the company is a recognition uh, by the uh, investors that uh, the company is in the right sector, is doing the right things at the right moment, uh, uh, has a lot of opportunities uh, ahead of herself. There is a strong recognition that uh, growth uh, uh, will be coming. And since there are not many opportunities for growth uh, in the market, uh, while uh, uh, one characteristic of Celnex is the predictability of a long-term uh, cash flow uh, generation, given the contracts that are already in place. So there is a, there is a recognition that the, the kind of growth that the company is pursuing is a long-term stable growth. And it, it's true, isn't it, that as well as combing through your company results and the bottom line, uh, investors are also increasingly looking at other factors for companies like uh, what are you doing to help the environment, how good is your corporate social responsibility, and even prospective workers are starting to look at companies to say how inclusive and diverse is this company that I could be joining. 
these issues are no longer about just companies paying lip service, are they, Mr. Benova? Yeah, I think that there is an increasing awareness uh, that uh, uh, the company is not only about creating shareholders' value. And, of course, there is no doubt that Cenex has been very good at creating shareholders' value uh, in the last several years. It's about uh, creating a sense of uh, belonging uh, for the community. It's about uh, uh, being a good citizen. It's about uh, uh, creating an environment that is friendly to everybody. So, uh, and it's not because the, there are laws that have been implemented, there are regulations that have come into effect uh, that uh, has uh, a little bit uh, changed the, the scope uh, of action for a company like us or like every company that is operating in the market. It's really a deep sentiment that the company has. Uh, it has to be part of the community to give a big and positive contribution to the community and uh, at the same time, of course, keep uh, creating shareholders' value as it has been doing in the past. Mm. Mr. Martinez, have there been concrete measures uh, that the company has implemented to, to show the outside world uh, that you treat issues uh, uh, such as corporate social responsibility, um, diversity, all these issues, that you treat them seriously? Well, just uh, to, to say that our core business is about to share. And to share is, al is, al is always taking care of the environment. I mean, we are avoiding the duplication of towers, of the visual and infrastructure impact on our society. But beyond of this principle uh, that is driving uh, our day-by-day -day operations, we are trying to incorporate uh, seriously uh, different policies. For instance, about equity, diversity and integration policy. Another important thing is our commitment with uh, the objective of the United Nations about to reduce uh, the emissions and, and to fight uh, seriously about uh, the change of climate. Um, so we are also uh, launching different uh, type of initiatives related with the, uh, with the society. Uh, for instance, uh, working with the young people in order to, to encourage them in order to, to, to be uh, telecom uh, engineers or telecom technicians uh, in order to attract or more technical uh, careers uh, from, from the young people because sometimes our uh, industry is not very well known by, by the young people. They, are, they, they, they know very well, they care about the, the, the mobiles, and, but to, to telecom it's something beyond of, of the devices. And encouraging workers to share in the value of the company, I understand that you introduced in 2019 a, a very special scheme uh, to involve workers in some of the, the profit sharing. Can you tell me a little bit more about that, Mr. Benabe? Yeah, the, the board uh, uh, is uh, uh, very uh, interested uh, in creating the conditions for uh, all the people to participate in the success uh, of Celex. Uh, and as I said before, the company is about uh, uh, creating a sense of purpose uh, for all the people. And the, uh, those that work in the company are the major component uh, of the success story of the company. So the board has decided uh, to adopt uh, uh, a shared distribution plan that uh, will be extended to all the, uh, all the employees of the company and uh, we will see from there how to improve and how to increase the instruments uh, for having a better, bigger and more uh, deep participation uh, to the goals and to the objectives of the company. And uh, let's finish by looking ahead to 2020, to this year. Uh, you kicked off the new year with another acquisition, the Portuguese tower and site operator Omtel. Is that a sign of what's in store for the next uh, decade, Mr. Benavé? 
Well, the next decade uh, will present lots of opportunities, but I think that uh, uh, in 2020, given what has happened in 2019, so the huge amount of consolidation of uh, new acquisitions that uh, the company has done, I think that uh, one of the objectives will be to consolidate, uh, uh, to create a common culture, to create uh, uh, shared values uh, in the teams that uh, uh, are working in the, in the different countries. So that is a cultural objective that uh, will take uh, a lot of time. Uh, of course, it will take uh, probably several years. But in 2020, uh, I think that the first objective is to consolidate what has been done in 2019. Of course, if there will be opportunities, these opportunities will be seized. But of course, it's not, uh, it's not something that we can predict now. So consolidation is your watchword. But Mr. Martinez, are there also technological challenges no. of 2020? No, fully agree. Maybe the main challenges are about integration. Just to reinforce this idea, so this is not an M&A machine. This is a group. This is an industrial group. So it means that we are integrating people. We have to set new teams. Sometimes we need to expand our new culture how to deliver services to our customers everywhere with the same, let me say, framework. So this is really a challenge when you are delivering services in eight countries with different cultures, sometimes with different languages, and with full respect for, for this uh, culture, different, for these different cultures. So I think the main challenge is not about growth, it's about integration, it's about consolidation. And we have to pay attention on it we are not uh, obsessed with inorganic growth, but obviously we have to keep going and to take advantage when we found the opportunity, because when the opportunity is there, there are a few, a few opportunities. So this is a very narrow market, so we have to keep going on the inorganic growth, but paying attention that the day after of the celebration of the m and we have to deliver services, reliable, I want to underline, reliable services to our customers for a period of 20 and 30 years. So it's a very long journey and we are paying a lot of attention on how to manage customers through the infrastructure. And providing reliable services has technological challenges. Is 5G one of the biggest ones? Absolutely, yes. 5G will be a transformational tipping point in our industry. It's not just an evolution from 4G. It uh, will be a different technology. It means that uh, new infrastructure, new topologies, new requirements from the network, from the customers and from the services point of view. It means that uh, we will see uh, also new opportunities in the value chain. We have to assess properly if it makes sense for a company like Celnex or not. But always, always dealing with our customers. Well, we could talk uh, for hours about all of these issues, but I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. I'd like to thank you both. It's been a real pleasure talking to you both. Uh, thank you, Franco Benabe. Uh, chairman of Cellnex and Tobias Martinez, uh, chief executive. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.